This is part 38 of the Stuart Major Beam Engine Rebuild, testing the water pump and finishing the rebuild. Everything has to come to an end, and we're nearly there now. If you watched the series from the beginning, you'll remember that the beam was very much out of alignment, and now you can see on the finished rebuild, the main beam fully aligns with the entablature, as does the piston rod end. This can be shown by putting a piece of brass in between the parts at each side. The gaps are about the same. When I first got this engine, this is what it was like. Have a close look. The beam was not in the centre of the two points, as you can see here. This part of the job took quite a lot of thinking about. I had to realign the beam as well as the main column. But I'm sure you will agree the job was well worth doing. Now what about these corners? I was asked by the owner of the engine to use these stick-on brick things, which I wouldn't normally do. I would use Typhoc, which are scale-sized bricks. But anyway, I used them and I have a problem with the corners. It would have given it away if I had butted the bricks up on the corners because they're only half thickness. So what I'm going to do, on each of the corners I'm going to put a piece of brass angle. I did dummy this up a while back with some mahogany, and I quite liked it, but I didn't want to use mahogany. It's better to have metal on the corners. Looking at it though, I don't think the brass works. If this was a brass engine it would be fine, but it's not. It's a very large cast iron engine. So what I'm going to do is paint the brass. To make sure my paint sticks to the brass, I'm going to use some acid etch primer as the first coat. I bought this from Blackgates Engineering, and this is from the company Precision Paints, or Phoenix, who manufacture the paint that I use. The first thing to do though before I do anything with the paint, is to clean up the surface of the brass. And by clean up, I really mean roughen up the surface of the brass, not forgetting the inside surface, because this will eventually be stuck to the brick and it's no good if it just falls off. A quick health and safety warning when doing a job like this, always wear suitable PPE, personal protective equipment, like safety glasses. I like to take it one stage further, so I always wear a gas mask and an all over one piece rubber suit. After shaking the can vigorously for a few minutes, it's time to paint the components. This paint is very runny, and I believe that to be so because the paint contains an acid and you need a little bit of time for the acid to eat into the metal, so it's quite slow drying. Rather than leave the camera on the drying paint, I'll put the camera on the engine running on the bench. I've been running this now for a couple of days and it's starting to free off. And eventually as it runs in it will get very free running. It's not doing too badly now. I could get the engine to go slower than this, but I'd have to cheat. And I'm not going to do that. All of the bearings are as tight as they're supposed to be. No slop in any of the bearings and the engine feels quite firm when you turn it over by hand. This is a little idea I've used because the exhaust pipe is a bit on the short side and delivers the oily residue all over the base. This piece of aluminium tube slides over the exhaust pipe and takes the residue further out away from the base. I could have used a long flexible pipe, but I didn't have one of that diameter. While we're on the subject of pipes, these are a couple of water pipes I attached to the engine. The right hand pipe is the water inlet, and it sucked the water from the container without being primed. And the other one is the water outlet, and as you can see, for every stroke of the engine, you get a drop of water. After I'd finished, I pulled the pipe out for the inlet to drain the pump. It's quite important that I drain this pump. If you look at the pump ram in this clip, you'll see that it's covered in an emulsion of oil and water. This will need removing if the engine is going to be stored for any time, just in order to prevent any rusting. If you watched the last video, I ran the engine like this at the end of it, and you can see now it's definitely running slower. Ta-da! Painting time. I caught you all unawares there. There is just a tiny bit more painting, and of course it's painting the corner pieces. I'm using Precision Paints LMS Red as usual. I'm going to give them a couple of coats of paint, but I'll spare you the second coat. So that is about it. I'll try and make a video of the engine in steam and show the corner pieces fitted. For now, here are a few really nice shots of the engine running on the bench. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this entire series very useful. I was but a young man when I started it. <laughs>